And we're back. Uh, I just put some, uh, got this end stripped down. And got the uh, shrink wrap on it. So it's ready to be soldered to the board. Now, being a Corona, the uh, point where the low loss solders to is actually underneath this leg of the X clamp here. So I guess uh, I'm going to show you how to remove these X clamps with a screwdriver. Um, this isn't incredibly difficult, but it's not always incredibly easy. And a lot of times it requires some patience. What you're going to want to do here is as you can see around the X clamp, there's just the slightest gap around the, uh, the foot and the clamp itself. So what we're going to do is take our screwdriver and just get it down inside that gap, like so, and use the foot as our prying point. Now, try not to slip. I like to just take and uh, get something up under there, just kind of keep it elevated. And then uh, continue to work your way around the the clamp here. As you can see, I got the pressure off of it now. Now it's just a matter of getting it to uh, pop, just like so. Now we'll move over to the other one. Usually, if you can get two of these off, you're good to go. A lot of times you need to at least get three off. Now if you want to save yourself some ass ache, you can go ahead and buy the uh, Executor X clamp removal tool, which makes this a much easier job. I'm going to do a third point here just so you can watch. Actually, come to this one and this this thing's just about ready to pop off of here but she's being a little fickle and there we have it now you gotta be careful when you remove these cause if you slip there's all kinds of things to damage under here. And look at all these little resistors and whatnot you could accidentally rip off. So be very, very careful. Now that we have the uh, X clamp removed, I'm going to widen out and show you where we're going. Our low loss wire, well, the post out goes to this row right here, which is several different solder points. And then our, our, our nah, whatever. I think I just screwed up something there, but uh, our our her her low loss is coming right over here. I'm gonna zoom in. You see these two capacitors here? There's a point labeled C5R11. We're going right here to this this pad closest to the C. In my case, the top one. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, add a little flux to this. The solder point is actually an alternate point in uh, the Trinity. Things are just a little bit different on the Corona. And we're going to heat that pad 
and apply a little bit of fresh solder to it. As you can see I got a nice little bead on there. I'm going to keep a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron here. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky. Simply because this, this low loss is incredibly stiff. So you want to make sure that you have it situated to where it's not going to put too much drag on the uh, trace there. That's the low loss in place. Uh, as always, remember to clean up after yourself. There wasn't a whole lot of flux on there. It's always a good idea to keep a nice clean install. Now our yellow wire, which we could have also fished right through that same big hole. Yellow wire I need to trim up yet. It's still incredibly long. I'm only going to cut it to fit, so... So, same as a trinity, we're going to the second point from the top. This big old row here. Don't be afraid to, to use too much flux. I mean, too much is better than not enough. Especially when it comes to these tiny little pads. It don't take much heat to cook one of these pads off. I'm just applying some fresh solder to the pad. And now we're going to bring our yellow wire over here. If it wants to. get rid of some of this solder. Too much solder on my tip. It just takes a small amount on these little bitty pads. And there we have it. At the moment, we have everything installed into this Corona motherboard. And all that's left is getting on the computer and doing all the programming. Now, normally I would have done some of it by now, but I'm doing a step-by-step -step install here. Now, another thing I want to let you guys know. Now that we've taken these X clamps off, you have to change this thermal paste. It's it's not a matter of do do I have to? Do you really think I should? No, you do. You have to. Cuz this stuff is old and dried up and crusty. I mean, look at this. I'm barely getting anything on my finger there and that's only right in the middle, so. So you really need to In fact, every install I do if I am taking a motherboard out of a cage, I change the thermal paste. First of all, the stuff that Microsoft uses from the factory is garbage. It's ceramic based. Uh, it's no good. It's, it's really no good. Uh, Arctic Silver 
is one of the most popular but there there are better types of thermal paste I mean they get they got stuff with diamond shavings in it and whatnot that stuff's a lot more expensive but it's a hell of a lot better so but this uh, change in the thermal paste it takes a few minutes it's not very difficult to do um, I'm not gonna have you guys watch this so uh, I'm gonna get this thermal paste changed and then I'll see you again on the next part of the video where we uh, actually do all of our programming with the cool runner and reading the NAND and writing the ECC and all that good stuff so alright thanks guys I'll see you in a moment